So in the last video, we talked a bit about sessions and how we could create a session inside our website. And in this video, we're going to talk a bit about session security, which is going to be quite a, it's going to be one of the more complex episodes we have in this course up until now, but I will try to take it and explain it as simple as I can and just show you exactly what we need to do when it comes to basic security using sessions. So the first thing we have to talk about is what exactly are we trying to defend ourselves from? Because we have talked about prepared statements and sanitation, you know, to defend against SQL injection and cross-site scripting. Uh, but what are we defending ourselves against in this video here? What exactly are we trying to prevent using session security? Uh, something that is very important when it comes to having anything to do with the session is to make sure that other users on other computers are not able to steal our session data. So whenever we create a session inside the website, like we did in the last episode, and we start creating these session variables that are going to store data inside the server, then we want to make sure that the ID stored inside the server is only gonna to point to us who is using our computer. So the session ID cookie inside our browser should only match up with the ID inside the server for us. So if another user out there were to hijack our session ID, then they can actually go in and steal our session data, which is not a good thing. So we need to make sure we have some session ID security uh, whenever it comes to handling sessions inside the website. Just to mention a couple of ways that people could potentially hijack your session could, for example, be using something called session ID sniffing, where a user can go in and intercept unsecured trafficking going on inside your website. And they basically hijack your session ID and impersonate you as the user inside their computer. And this is why it's important that whenever you have a session running inside a website that you don't have a HTTP connection, but a HTTPS connection. Another method people use is also something called session ID prediction, where basically they try to guess what kind of ID you have inside your computer. So if you haven't generated a strong session ID, they can try to predict and guess whatever session ID you might have. So it is important that we also go inside our code and generate a much stronger session ID to prevent this sort of thing from happening. And then we also have another very popular one, which is something called session fixation, which is a type of attack where the user basically tries to make you use the cookie that they have on their computer. So for example, by sending you a malicious link to a website that they actually included the session ID for their computer in. So in a situation where you might click on a link that they sent you through, for example, an email, then you can actually go into a website using the session ID that they created. So basically you're impersonating them inside the website, but you don't know it. And then of course, we do also have cross-site scripting attacks where people try to inject JavaScript into your website to, for example, steal your cookies. So there's many different ways that people can hijack a session inside a website. And we have to make sure we try to prevent as much as possible. And just to mention some additional security things that you just kind of need to know whenever you have anything to do with sessions inside the website. Uh, whenever you have anything to do with sessions, it's very important that you always validate and sanitize user data because that is always important to do. So whenever the user submits some sort of data, make sure you don't have it be unsecure as you use it inside your website. Another thing you want to do is also make sure you don't store any sort of sensitive information inside a session variable, for example, a user's address or phone number or email or something like that. Uh, because if a hacker were to gain access to all the session data, then all of a sudden they have access to very personal information, which is not a good thing. You do also want to make sure that whenever you have any sort of session data that you don't need to use anymore, that you go inside and you actually delete it. Because if you have old session data stored in there that isn't usable anymore, then there's no need for a potential hacker to gain access to information that could have been prevented because you don't need it anymore inside your website. And with that said, it is also kind of a thing whenever we have session security going on that the more security you have inside your website, the more you're going to inconvenience the user that is using your website because that kind of goes hand in hand and you have to find a balance between how much do you want to inconvenience the user versus how secure should your website be. If you want to have the maximum amount of security inside your website, you should force the user to log in every single time they use your website. But that would also mean that the user has to log in every time they use your website. So all of a sudden we have this, again, security or convenience because you also don't want to have users being scared away of your website. So that's just a very important thing for me to, to just sort of point out there. I do also want to mention here that some of the stuff that we're going to be doing in this video will also be changeable inside the PHP .ini file inside your server. So something that we haven't talked about yet is that if I were to go inside my XAMPP installation, then I do actually have a PSP folder 
And inside that folder, we have something called a php.ini file. And this file has a bunch of settings inside of it that you can change in order to do some of the things that we can do in this video here. But I do want to do everything using code in this video here, just to make sure that everyone who is following can just sort of follow and just write the code down and you know that you don't get scared because, oh no, we have to go inside a weird file inside our PHP installation. How will I do this inside a live server and that kind of thing? So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to do everything using code in this video here. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is one of the settings that you do have inside the INI file that you can change using code, which is something called session use only cookies. And this is something that goes in and makes sure that any session ID can only be passed using session cookies and not, for example, through the URL inside your website, because that is one of the ways that people, they do session fixation, where they go in and try to make you click on a malicious link and it take you to a website and then they might have a session id stored inside the url of that link so this is one of the ways we can prevent that from happening so the way we can do that is go inside our website and what i'll actually do here is i will not start creating code at the top of my index file i'll actually create a new file inside this uh, root folder here so i'll create a new file and i'm going to call this one config.php and this is going to be a file that I'm going to link at the top of my index page here. So I'm going to say require underscore once. And then I want to link to my config dot PHP. And any other page inside the website where we want to include this code, we can just go ahead and require the file just like we did here. So what I can do is I can go inside the config file. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up my PHP tags. I'm not going to close it again, though, because this is going to be a pure PHP file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set something called INI underscore set parentheses. And inside this one, we can set a parameter, which is going to be our session uh, dot use underscore only underscore cookies. And if I were to set this one, I can also set a value, which is going to be one. And this is going to mean that we're setting this one equal to true because one is true and zero is false. So in this sort of way, we can go inside that .ini file and actually change some of the parameters using code inside our PHP code. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this because we do actually have a second one that we also want to make sure we set in here. This one is going to be called use strict mode. So we're going to say session.use strict underscore mode. And what this setting is going to do is a couple of things or quite a few things, actually. One of them being that we make sure that the website only uses a session ID that has actually been created by our server inside the website. It is also going to go in and make our session ID a little bit more complex when they actually get created. Uh, so in that sort of sense, it makes it a little bit more difficult for people to go in and try to guess your session ID inside your cookie. So there's a couple of really good things that this particular one does. And this is actually a mandatory thing to have whenever you have anything to do with sessions inside your website. So you want to make sure that this line of code is inside your website anytime you have anything to do with sessions. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some cookie parameters inside our code. So whenever we start a session inside our website and the cookie is created, we want to make sure that we do have some parameters set for that particular cookie to make it more secure. So what I can do is I can create a function here called session underscore set underscore cookie underscore params. And if we were to create this one, we can go inside of here and we can actually create a bunch of different parameters. So I could potentially create a array here. And inside this array, we can define a bunch of parameters. And the first one we're going to set is something called lifetime. Now, a lifetime is basically going to go inside your cookie and say that, OK, so after a certain amount of time has passed inside the website, we want to make sure this cookie is going to get destroyed. And the reason this is important is because we don't want to have the same cookie running inside the website for too long, because if that were to happen, it is going to increase the chances of someone catching that cookie and stealing it. And if they have that cookie, we do also want to make sure that after a certain amount of time, they can't use that cookie anymore. So what we want to do in here is we want to set a parameter called lifetime. And I want to point to a new value, which is going to be 1800 which is going to be 30 minutes in seconds. So in this sort of way, we now created a new lifetime for our cookies so they actually get destroyed after a certain amount of time. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set something called a domain. So whenever we want to go inside and create a cookie, it will only work inside a particular domain. So in this case here, we're going to point to localhost 
because right now we have XAMPP running, which is a local host server. So this is going to be the domain that we have to point to. Of course, if you had to put this online and you had another website, you would call it something like example.com. Uh, for example, if it has to work for that particular website, but like I said, in our case here, we're using local host. The next thing we're going to create is going to be something called a path. And this is going to point to a sort of path inside your domain here. So in our case here, we could actually say that it just has to work inside any path inside our website. So what I can do is I can say that we want to set it equal to forward slash, which is going to be any sort of subdirectory or sub pages inside our website that is currently running uh, inside this particular domain up here. Our next parameter is going to be something called secure, which is going to make sure that we only run this cookie inside a secure website. So only using a HTTPS connection and not a HTTP connection. So I'm going to set this one equal to true. Then I'm going to say I want to add another one, which is going to be HTTP only. So we're going to say HTTP only. And we want to set this one equal to true as well. And this basically just goes inside our website and restricts any sort of script access from our client, which means us inside the browser. So now that we have these, we can actually go below here and actually start our session. So we're going to say session underscore start, just like we learned in the previous episode. So all this information up here has to be set before you start the session. That is very important to do uh, because these has to be set before we actually have a session created. But now there's a couple more things we have to do whenever we create a session. And I did actually mention one of them, which was we need to make sure that the standard session ID created by this particular function here is going to get even better because right now when we create a session ID using session underscore start, it is going to be a very basic, not really a secure session ID. So we want to regenerate it into a stronger version, which we do actually have a PHP function that can do. Uh, so we have a function which is called session underscore regenerate ID. And this particular one, if we were to set this one to true, is going to just generate a new ID for this particular current session ID that we have. So it's not gonna create a new one, it is actually going to regenerate the current session ID we have and make it into a better version. However, even though we did use this function in here underneath the session start in order to regenerate the ID, it is also a very good idea to do this automatically after a certain amount of time has passed inside the website. So if a attacker were to gain access to your session ID, then after a certain amount of time, that session ID no longer works for them. So we want to make sure we regenerate this periodically inside our website. And I do actually have a blocker code to do that. So I'm just gonna go and copy paste it in and then I'll go ahead and explain what exactly it does. So underneath my session underscore start, I went ahead and created this block of code here. I'm just gonna talk a bit about what exactly it does. Uh, so inside this block of code, I have a if and an else statement. And inside the if statement, I'm basically just checking if we right now have a session variable created using the is set function here inside my session called last underscore regeneration. If I do not have it created, it means that this is the first time I'm running this page inside the website and it's the first time I'm actually starting up my session. And if that's the case, I do actually want to make my session ID stronger by regenerating it. And I do also want to make sure I actually create this session variable that we're checking for up here. So the first time we're running this if statement, it will actually go in and create this session variable. So anytime other than this in the future, it is going to run this else statement instead. I did also give this one a value, which is going to be equal to the current time that we have inside the server here. And this is going to be important for us to actually check if a certain amount of time has actually passed since we last time actually regenerated our session ID. So the current time for us actually regenerating this session ID is going to be equal to our session called last regeneration. And inside this else statement, I created a variable called interval, which is going to be set equal to the time that I want to pass until we have to regenerate our session ID again. Uh, so we want to have this in seconds, which means that in one minute we have 60 seconds. And then I'm basically just multiplying it with the number of minutes that I want to pass until we actually regenerate this session ID. So in this case, 30 minutes. So if you want this to be 10 minutes, then you can write 10. If you want this to be 30, then we're gonna write 30. And then afterwards, I went ahead and created a if condition, which takes the current time and minuses that with the time inside our session variable, which is going to give us a number of seconds. And then I check those seconds if they're greater than or equal to our interval. And if it's more than 30 minutes, then I'm going to regenerate our session ID. And I'm also gonna go ahead and reset my last regeneration session variable to be the current time that I now regenerated the session ID inside my website. 
So we're basically just regenerating the ID inside our session every 30 minutes. That is what this code does. And with this said, you now know some of the basics when it comes to session security inside your website. Um, I do want to point out here that there is more we could talk about when it comes to session security, for example, creating a new session ID. So not regenerating a new session ID, but actually creating one using, for example, a function called session underscore create ID. And then you could take this ID and combine it with your user ID from inside the database whenever you create a login system in order to create a unique ID for a login session. So um, there's many different things we could talk about. For now, I think this is good when it comes to beginning and just sort of starting out with session security. And just to mention this again, for people who did miss it at the beginning, we can't just take this file here that we've just created together and just go inside one of the pages inside our website and whenever we want to create a session inside one of these pages, we just sort of link to this file. And then we have all of this, you know, session security going on inside those pages. I do also want to mention at the end here that if you are a channel member, then you do, of course, also have access to all my personal notes here. So if you want to have all my personal notes for, for example, this page in here with all the comments inside of them, then you do have access to these files if you are a channel member. And you can find a link for that in the description. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you guys in the next one.